So in this video, I interview another one of my top coaching clients. He's going to share how he was able to take eight listings in the last 30 days. In this interview, I'm going to break down his daily schedule, his lead generation strategies, his lead conversion strategies, and then most importantly, we're going to break down his appointment strategy that causes him to get as many listings as he's getting. So you guys, I hope that you enjoy the show. Let me know what questions you have in the comments beneath this video. All right, Alex. So listen, literally before I hit the record, I'm like, we got a great story to tell today. And so let me just, let me tee this up. All right. So sure. Go in, for it. inside of our private community, you, you posted this, this was on August 4th. So almost 30 days ago. And in July alone, you did eight listings which resulted in you being the number one listing agent of the month. So, dude, phenomenal work. I mean, obviously, there's a story behind okay. this and so much to talk about. So first, before we jump in, appreciate you jumping on the show with us today. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me. It's uh, it's really cool. Um, I, I joined the community after seeing one of these videos. So it's cool to kind of come full circle, man. So I appreciate it. it. Yeah, that's great. That's exactly right. And they, they help a lot of people. So... So first off, I mean, there's just so much to unpack here, right? So I want to yeah. I want to kind of start from um, really the the story from you went so long without any business to yeah. exploding the business. Yeah. So so where is the business coming from? What lead sources are you working? Everything that's controllable, which is outbound phone calls, expireds, and fizzbos. That's it. Got it. Now, yeah. uh, how long were you or how long have you been in real estate just for context? Um, probably four or five years. Okay. Something like that. So you've been in it for a while. Um, yeah. Before you and I started working together, um, what what were you doing to get business or get some of the results that you're getting now? Yeah. So what I was doing prior to what I'm doing now is, dude, basically just like posting on Facebook, just kind of hoping for the best, you know, talking to friends when I saw them or or whatever. Um, but yeah, nothing very controllable, but that was basically it posting on Facebook. So now again, I think just, uh, uh, comparison or perspective matters. What was the best year you had doing various different things, whether that be social media, yeah. fa- like what was, what was a, a good year for you look like before? So, so 3 million in sales would have been a good year. So what you were able to do is what you're saying is in one year you did in one month. I did 12 years in a month. Yeah. Which is awesome. Wow. All right. So yeah. unbelievable. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very and, cool. and you are the one to thank for that. I mean, you're the one that put in the work. Yeah. Certainly we're going to talk about tactics and strategies on the podcast today, but like really yeah. you're the one that did it. Now, what you said, I want to just touch base on that. So you said it's about an outbound prospecting approach versus being passive and waiting for business uh, to find you, Alec. And so what triggered you to say, dude, I got to do something different. I cannot just sit around and wait for business. No, so that's a good question. So to to give a little context, the first six months of the year, I I didn't sell anything. Um, And the reason was, so in January, my aunt had passed away and then my brother passed away, uh, which obviously... It's nothing you can prepare for. So it took me a little bit of time to, I don't know, I had to take some time off and grieve with the family. Um, And a big part of what I was doing prior to that was working with people I knew. And to be quite frankly, man, I I did not want to work with people I knew at that point because everyone's, it was kind of a, my brother's death was a little public. I just didn't want to talk to those people. So I started researching how to find people to work with that I don't know. Um, so that's kind of how I found you, um, you know, outbound expired fizzbos, everything like that. And it's just taken off. Got it now. And thanks for sharing that, by the way. Um, I know you went through a lot of, a lot of stuff there. And so you said yourself, like, like I said to myself, I said, there's a lot more people buying and selling homes that I don't know than there are that I do know. So I got to learn how to go out there and find and communicate to those folks. So when you first got started, was it difficult for you to get over the, the mindset of like reaching out to people that were not expecting you to reach out, which resulted in you having to build a skill set? Can you walk us through what that experience was like in the beginning? Yeah. So 
it, you know, it's, it's kind of a mindset more than anything. Um, and I guess I would say I have like a typically aggressive personality when it comes to working. So for me, it wasn't too tough. I credit that to like wrestling in the past and my job before this, which was outbound phone calls. Um, so it really wasn't crazy to me. I mean, there's definitely days where I wake up and I do not want to make the phone calls, but I don't get paid if I don't make the phone calls. Right. So yeah. Not, yeah. And, and not working for six months, you know, looking at my bank account, I really only had one option and that was get on the fucking phone basically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you were in pain. You're like, dude, I got to freaking do this or, or, or I'm in trouble. So yeah, just, yeah. just through this, this inner, this, this conversation, people are going to see the amount of conviction and confidence that you have. And that has carried over to you generating business from people that you don't know, I would imagine. So let's, so you're working for sell by owners expired. Um, yeah. So let's kind of break that, the, the business down. Let's sure. start with the, the daily schedule. Can you yeah. walk us through like a typical prospecting morning and what that might look like? Yeah. So everyone's different, but for me, um, if I don't work out in the morning, it's rare that I'm gonna make the phone calls. So, I mean, I'm up at like 4.45, hit the gym by 5.15. And that's kind of my time where I get my mind right. And I'm able to uh, accomplish something that most people aren't throughout the whole day. And I do it by, you know, seven o'clock. Uh, hopping on the phones by eight o'clock. Um, from eight to 12, I'm making outbound phone calls. And I used to be nervous making phone calls starting at eight. But I had a mental shift when I realized I was I was calling withdrawns, people who had fired their agent. And if I'm the first voice of contact at eight o'clock in the morning, they know I'm getting up and grinding. You know, a lot of people might be firing their agents because they never received a call from them. And they're they're getting a call from me at eight o'clock in the morning the day they're a free person. Um, so I, I think that's really helped me, you know, get the listings and then progress at the appointments. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we're going to unpack that whole process. So real quick, before I don't want to miss that point. Sure. I, I, want, I want you to explain, Alec, to maybe an agent that is new to sales or new to real estate, the difference in being the first voice with one of these leads yeah. versus like the 20th uh, agent to call and the light yeah. years of difference that it is and the importance of being that first voice. Yeah. Well, you nailed it. Uh, when you're the first voice, it can be the best phone call ever. Exactly. People, people in some cases are excited to hear from you. Can you believe that? Yep. Um, when you're the 20th person, however, you got to remember they've talked to 19 people before you and you have no idea how bad those people were on the phone or anything, right? Yeah. So when they hear you, they think you're just another agent, but yep. really you're a rock star. So you should talk to them first. Yeah, for sure. All right. So we're going to get into some best practices that, that you are doing on the phone in a second from a skills perspective that you're finding really works. Before that, um, I, I am very curious of the appointments that you set and you ultimately go on, Alec, if you had to guess how many of those come as a result of the first call versus yeah. lead follow-up, like what's the percentage breakdown for you? Yeah. So you're, I, I don't know if you're going to like this answer, but for me, it's all the first phone call. Yeah. Um, I, I would, because of your personality, you're a driver personality. So you're yeah. right to the point. Let's go now. Totally get it. It's like a hundred percent. And again, I was in a situation where I didn't get paid for six months. So I feel like I didn't have the option for the follow-up. And also my follow-up just sucks. Yeah. So I knew if I'm going to you know, close on someone, it's, it's gotta be the first phone call. And just for you, it's like now or never like, dude, I'm going to get this yes. now or my lead follow-up is so shit right now, the system it. yeah. that it's going to yeah. fall through the cracks. So I'm going to fight yeah. for it now. Exactly. So yeah, I'm excited to work on that. I'm excited to work on that part because maybe I can like double my business, but you took the words out of my mouth. I mean, once we put the lead follow-up in place, I mean, dude, you're going to be an absolute killer. So, um, so that's even better because now what I want to talk about is what, what are the skills? What is it that maybe we're saying or, or, or more importantly, Alec, how we're saying what we're saying on the call that results in you setting appointments on the first call? Let's kind of break it down. Yeah. Um, well, as far as like the tonality of the conversation, it starts out with curiosity, right? Being like generally curious why someone's home didn't sell or hasn't sold. It opens up the conversation a lot further. Um I think some agents might call and just try to tell them why they're the best in the world and all that stuff. No one really wants to hear that garbage. People want to hear about themselves. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. People want to hear about themselves. So opening up for dialogue, 
it, it definitely helps. So um, you come, you, you, your approach in the beginning of the call is saying, okay, I need to be genuinely curious in them. And the yes. more genuine or authentic you can come across, the l- more likely it is that the prospect then opens up to you. 100%. And it's, it's genuine too, because if I want to work with these people, I really want to know why didn't it sell? You know, yeah. sometimes it's, sometimes it's as easy as just looking at the photos. Sometimes it's, you know, if, if they got feedback, letting me know what it is, we can adjust the price when we work together. Um, but, you know, I think in business, you, you need to know why someone had failed if you're going to do the job better, probably. Right. For sure. Um, yeah. So it, I think that they appreciate that. And when it gets them talking, maybe they realize it's not their house, but maybe it was their previous agent. Yeah. Right? Or maybe they don't know what they're doing as a for sale by owner. Yeah. So you're, you're really, and we're going to get to that. That's the pain piece, right? So once you find pain, we leverage that to set the appointment. So when you, your approach to get past reflex resistance that every prospect has, as soon as they pick up the phone, what is a technique or a strategy that you're finding working Alec to help you get past that initial, just like, ah, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. How are you able to get into the conversation? Just a mic, what you say is a micro commitment at first, getting them to agree to something just so small opens it up a ton. Um, you know, if I call someone, I basically ask them permission to talk, you know, beautiful. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey, this is Alec. I'm not sure if now's a good time. I was just hoping I could tell you why I was calling and you can totally decide if we continue or not from there. Is that okay? No, no one's when you switch that, I mean, how like, man, oh man, like that, that piece right there. Yeah. Uh, is so critical. And were you nervous when I asked you to say that? Or were you like, dude, I don't know about, or, or are you finding now like, dude, it makes so much more sense. Everyone just, all their defenses drop when you use that opener. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Cause you know, if people agree to yes, then they're agreeing to whatever you have to say next after that. Yeah. You know? It's great. Um, and it's, you know, what you call reverse selling. It's just doing the opposite, breaking the mold, the stereotype, because doing what other people aren't. That's right. All right. So, so you, you use the new opener, which is allowing yeah. you to get into the conversation. And then where do you take the, the conversation with like an expired, as an example, where do you go to next? So I'm typically asking if they had gotten an offer or not, or why it came off the market. Right. Okay. So, um, Hey, I saw that your home came off the market. Did you end up accepting an offer or is it still available? So I'm asking with curiosity, um, you know, sometimes I don't know what came off the market. So you have to deal with that. Sometimes they're like, no, no, you know, we didn't accept an offer. And that's kind of when you can dive into, to maybe why, and they can tell you why and how they feel. So that's the key. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Are you finding that is the key uh, lever that allows you to set the appointment, which is uncovering motivation and the pain of why the home didn't sell is that we yes. utilize that information to serve the seller and have them invite us over to their home. Yes. Generally, unless the prospect is crazy, which happens sometimes, sure. the more they the more they talk, the better, right? The more they can kind of get off their chest. In my mind, I'm seeing, like, let's say there's a wall and then there's, I don't know, a gas tank of trust, right? The more they're yeah. talking, I'm seeing the wall getting torn down between us and their tank of trust go up. Great so, analogy. Yeah. So trying to get them talk, talking more. And then I write down notes and when I meet with them, I, I bring it back up. So they know I'm not smart know, just bullshitting them. You know? Yeah. I love it. So yeah. once you, so that's the middle of the calls. So we talked about the beginning, the middle, what are you saying? Uh, and maybe we wouldn't have to get into the script too much. Although yeah. the audience is like, what's the script? What's the script? Uh, what is it that you're finding that helps you actually set and, and, and capture the appointment? So, you know, it's going to change depending on how the conversation goes, but something along the lines of, um, okay, gotcha. Well, hey, look, I'm actually free tomorrow at, you know, from 3 to 4 p.m. What I like to do is just go by and take a quick peek at the home. I can tell you why I think it didn't sell, and I can give you a backup plan in case you choose to sell the home later. No pressure, right? So, I easy. T- yeah. So kind of like the beginning of the call, um, just decreasing their resistance as much as possible. It's like a, there's a, it's a no lose situation. That's right. They get, they get a professional to see why the home didn't sell. I give them, you know, the backup plan, but it's really, a, you know, a listing appointment because yeah. I know they want to sell. They just tried to. Yeah. So you're, you're, that's the key thing that most agents are missing Alec, that you have picked up on so well is that you're selling the value of the appointment. You're not worried about listing the home over the phone. 
which then no. gets you the appointment. Because if you try to list the house over the phone, they feel like they feel pressure. They retract yes. and hang up on yes. you. I don't want nothing to do with you. And that yeah. is a key, key, key thing. And, and going back to that wall I talked about, the more I'm speaking and trying to sell myself, the more that wall is going up. Yep. But, you know, when you meet with somebody in person, that's that's when you're able to talk and kind of go over the game plan. Exactly you know? right. So let's transition to the appointment. We won't unpack the entire thing. Give us maybe one, two, three best practices that Alec is using right now that's really helping you uh, provide value at the appointment and ultimately winning the listing. Sure. Um, well, the first thing I do when I go into a home is I have them show me the home as if they were a real estate agent. And one thing I do is I'm, you know, I'm taking tons of notes on everything they're telling me. Um, I think that builds their trust knowing that I'm actually willing to work and listen to things I have to say. Um, typically, we'll sit down at the, the table. I'll go over. I, I mean, I am the market expert when it comes to their neighborhood. And I show them all of the other homes that have sold, that are active, that are pending. So they, they know that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to pricing. Sure. And I think a really big, um, you know, a really big thing is showing them what they'll net in a best case, worst case, or most likely. And then the last thing that I feel like a lot of agents don't do is ask for the business. You know, that's right. You're, you're not going to get anything signed if they don't know you want to work with them. Yeah. So always ask for the business. And sometimes ask two or three times, four times. I love it. Yeah. That's what you need to do. So, so as a result of all of this, right. So you said, um, Really, we're making this at the end of August, right? So where's your production sit now as a result of all the work you've done for yourself and the pipeline that you have? Where's your production sit year to date? Yeah, so right now I'm at, I think close to 2 million uh, yeah. or so. You got to remember I had $0 going into June, right? Yeah. Um, so that's a significant change, especially being that it's you know, almost beating like one of my top years, right? Yeah. So yeah. now- I mean, because that's all in the last 60 days. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I misspoke a little earlier. Like, you know, I, I did a year and a month. So if I continue to do that for an entire year, that's 12 years in a year. You know, absolutely. Totally get it. Totally get it. Yeah. So, yeah. so like with your new skill set or, or where you're at now, being able to do what you can do, like just let's look ahead for, for, uh, the rest of the year, but really moving into 2023, when you've got a full yeah. pipeline with your skills, with your mindset, what is your production goal for 2023? What do you think that you can achieve? So I got to work on my follow-up game, obviously. And I think it can go much higher. Um, but I, I, th I think I can push like 20 million, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a, a baseline, really, you know? Yeah. Um, and how many transactions would that be in your market, roughly? Um. I think, hold on, let me do the math real yeah. quick. Uh, I'm going to divide it. Oh, that's not right. I don't know off the top of my head. That's right. What market are you in? I'm in uh, Virginia Beach. Okay. So so your average price point is is what, 350 Yeah. Yeah. So that would be roughly like 50, between 50 and 60 deals. Yeah. Would I get you to that, that 20 yeah. million, right? Yeah. Um, totally, totally makes sense. I love it. And so, and then that would be what type of income would that represent if you do that? I'd be rich. You'd be rich. <laughs> yeah, it'd, be, it'd be significantly uh, better than the first six months of this year for sure. Yeah. Um, but that would be half yeah, million six, something. Six, 600 grand. Yeah. Yeah. Would that make you in the top 1% income earners in Virginia Beach? Yeah, probably the nation, I think, right? Yeah, in the nation, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Which is so exciting, right, Alec? And that's why I asked you about that, because it's like what we're able to do with these skills and the life that we can provide for ourselves is incredible when you're willing to do the work. Would you agree? I 100% agree, right? I, I think when you stand up for your, you know, you work for yourself and do the things that, that were, you know, just put in, put in the work, you know? Yeah. That's all it yeah. takes. You don't have to go to college. I didn't finish college or anything Me like either. that. I, yeah, probably barely finished high school. I don't yeah. know. But uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I know that I, I have a mindset that's like a motor that runs. And when you put that into anything, especially commission-based income where there's no ceiling, I mean. It's great. What is yours? Yeah. yeah. So uh, one, of the, one of the favorite questions I like to ask is if you can get your license all over again. So we went back five years. You come out of that exam room and you're like, yay, I passed my test. I'm a realtor. Yeah. Uh, and you ran into the Alec today. 
Yeah. What advice would you be giving that Alec five years ago that maybe other new agents could benefit that will watch this? Sure. So I think one of the big problems I ran into is, um, and I think it's good for some people to join a team. I guess I'm not a uh, very team player. I'm very independent, uh, yeah. maybe from wrestling. I don't know. But so when I join a team, what I learned immediately is you're kind of a buyer's agent. There's a pool of leads and call the old leads that are from Facebook or Zillow or whatever that, that everyone's already called. Right. Yeah. So I would definitely tell myself, do, do the hardest thing or what people think is the hardest thing outbound phone calls to someone that's maybe not expecting it. Um, it, yeah, just, just make the calls prospect, 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 you know? So, so if you could start all over again, five years ago, you would have had a direct outbound prospecting approach from day one, which who knows yeah, where you'd it. be at right now. That that's all I would do. Yeah. Outbound prospecting for sure. And then if the buyer comes, maybe, you know, hook up a bio agent friend, take, yeah. take some commission or whatever. Yeah. Cause you're primarily focusing on listings now, right? Or solely, that's all, that's all I'm yeah. doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, smart. So, dude, listen, yeah. I, I love this. I mean, I, there's so I have I have a half page of notes. Certainly, there's going to be a lot of nuggets. So, I want to I want to thank you for yeah, jumping man. on this. You know, uh, it's exciting to watch and see where you're going to take this business. And I mean this when I say this. I, I I'm very grateful to to work with people like you to be by your side, watch you climb these mountains to success. So appreciate you pouring back in the community. And I mean that. Yeah, man. Well, I really appreciate everything that you've done for the community and, and for me. I mean, it's a life changer. It can, you know, make me from average to very wealthy, which is very exciting for the future I want to create. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter where you are right now. That's a reflection of your past self. What you do today is what's going to make you tomorrow. So Great advice. Great advice. So appreciate it, Alec. And uh, for all of you, if you have any questions, certainly let us know in the comments. And Alec, if agents, if you've inspired people, which you absolutely have done, what is the best way for them maybe to reach out and and, and pick your brain? Is it on Instagram, Facebook? Where could they find you? Yeah. Instagram or Facebook. Um, I don't know if you can type out my name in the comments or whatever. Um, But yeah. Um, Just Alec underscore Cantor. And Alec Cantor is my name on Facebook. Feel free to reach out. Awesome. Well, appreciate you, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. See you, man. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye.